Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So you came here to visit with me? Did you come here to visit with me? I hope so, because that's what you're here for. I'm, I'm not going to be sharing nothing with you. I'm not going to be sharing any stuff. So if you got to go and like, I don't know, do the dishes and, you know, uh, you're sewing or you're trying to work on your planner or you're journaling and you just want to hear me because I'm not going to share anything that you need to see. You can just listen to my voice and hang out. OK, and so let's talk and let's catch up. Because maybe I'll try to organize myself here as I'm speaking with you. Let me see if that'll work. It may not work. <laughs> it might not work. Now, this is a very interesting little tidbit. And I just want to share this with you. I know it's a very oddball thing to say. I know this. But I had like four scissors here. And I'm down to zero once more. I love my kids. <sighs> They're always making and crafting and creating things and you know, building stuff. That's why I don't mind it. But I'm like, gee whiz, leave me one pair of scissors. I'm down to my little tiny ones. Just leave me one pair, man. Just one. Come on, brah. Just one. Well, we here in the state of Maryland, um, our last weather event, um, we got, I don't want to say we got lucky. A lot of people got flooded basements. There was a lot of flooding um, we had high winds. We didn't get any snow. So other people got snow, but we didn't get snow, right? Well, now it looks like we're going to get snow coming this Monday and Tuesday, possibly plus rain plus high wind. So it's going to be like a, a wintry mess per se. And then on Tuesday is going to be my twins birthday. They're going to be 10 years old. So super excited about that. As I open up my things and go through things. Um, and on top of that, let me pull this out so you can hear me. Put that in the trash. We're going to have a polar vortex thing going on. Oh, yeah. Tons of fun, baby. Tons of fun. So our temperatures are going to be dipping down way low because we've been in the 50s all week and even as high as 60 something this week. And we're in the dead of winter, you guys. None of this makes any kind of sense. It's kind of really creepy what's happening with the weather is scary and it's creepy because it's not natural and it's not normal. Um, but now we're going to be hit with this crazy, you know, this crazy cold weather all of a sudden. And I do have to put some plastic on some of my windows. I want to block the whole door of my sliding door with plastic because it's very drafty there. And uh, so I have things I have to do between today and Sunday. I do. I got stuff I have to do. And um, and I want to line things up. I want to make sure all my laundry's done. You know, just line things up and have things done, right? And then I, th I told my husband to buy some propane. I did. I asked him to buy propane in case something happens with this weather, since we're going to be getting this really cold weather, snow, rain, it could turn into ice. It could ice up the trees. There could be down trees, which could affect our electricity and it's going to be super cold. So it could be a gnarly little situation. So I'm just trying to prepare ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying, but I don't know if he's had an opportunity to you know do that even though I sent him a text telling him to take care of that you know I take care of other things and he takes care of certain things so definitely got to remind him about that one mm -hmm. definitely and I want to make sure that our generator is in good working order and I'm going to talk to him about that today as well he's at work right now I'm at home with the kiddos and because uh, I've been in this house and there has been no heat when the heat stopped working when it was cold outside and my kids had the flu and it was not a good situation at all. It was not good. We don't have a wood burning fireplace. No. 
we don't. And they were sick on top of that. It was just. So I, you know, those times I am reminded of, you know, you really want to line things up. So I recommend for anybody that's going to be within this polar vortex or has already gotten snow, is going to get more snow. Because this is like a pretty big event that's happening all over again, almost back to back for a lot of folks. Um, make sure that even if, you know, if you're broke, you live from paycheck to paycheck, like we do sometimes, um, you know, get your towels, get your old sweaters, line them up, roll them up, you know, put them underneath drafty doors, uh, do what you need to do. I remember we lived in a house that the house was over a hundred years old. I, uh, our, our twins were just born. Okay. And I'm a mother of five. I am. Um, if you include my two stepchildren, but they're like in their thirties, uh, that's seven altogether, but I birthed five. And, um, I remember when the twins were born, uh, this old house was so cold. I mean, it was, it was like being outside. It was just, and then we were renting and I literally lined the floor layers of our clothes and coats and blankets anything that I had that I wasn't using I laid it across the floor trying to hold back the cold air it was just that cold it was that cold and I'm a re a reminded of different situations and how bad it can be you know, I mean, I, we were blessed. We were indoors. We weren't outside homeless. Uh, we did have a roof over our head. You know, it felt like we were outside. Um, we did have a roof over our head. So it's a blessing. So I'm not denying that. But I am reminded of different events in my life of things we've been through. So I just like to prepare. And I don't want to go out there in some gnarly weather and have to go buy water and go buy stuff that I might need. So I'm trying to make sure I have everything that we need. Another time, let me show you another hard lesson learned. <laughs> I remember when the big C came into town, right? And everything was shut down like almost overnight all the stores were shut down you were supposed to stay in you weren't allowed to go out unless it was for essentials our business was considered an essential business so my husband still had to go to work in person every single day and I would go in and help and I would have to do other things that would cause me to travel to get parts and what have you right because our business is considered essential so we were up and working while everybody else was at home chilling for the most part there were some people that were front line and center at the stores that were allowed to be open managing and dealing with people in person just like us in person so um during that time when everything shut down, my family was going through a stomach flu. And we went through our toilet paper like it was water. And guess what happened when everything shut down? People went bananas buying toilet paper. Not water, not food, not medication toilet paper people and when you have a family of six that everybody is running to the bathroom because of a stomach flu and everything is running through them we ran out of toilet paper and I had a heck of a time trying to track down toilet paper it was insane so not only was there no toilet paper people reverted to napkins facial tissue anything that was a paper product that you can use people took it they took it okay and i feel bad for the parents that had babies people bought all the baby wipes and they didn't even have babies the baby wipes were gone i'm like everything was gone everything so 
not only did regular people that needed it didn't have it because people just bought it because everybody else was buying it. It was the weirdest situation. But when we needed it, we didn't have it. So I've learned my lesson from that. And now I've made sure that we have enough. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Oh my gosh, I learned my lesson. That was insane. I remember somebody gave me a heads up. One of the managers at the Dollar Tree, they, at that time, they were like, we're getting the shipment. We're getting toilet paper in. It's only one package per person. People were lined up outside 40 minutes before the store opened. Then they were only allowing five people at a time in there. Five people. And you had to wait your turn till, those, till each person came out. Then as a person came out, you were allowed in. And it was cold. At that time, it was cold, and uh, by the time you got in, and by the time I would get in, there would be nothing left. Everything would be gone. For toiletries, toilet paper, and that would include, and he was like, you were getting a shipment in of toilet paper, baby wipes, and, to and facial tissue, one per person, and they'd be gone that quick. I mean, just that fast. So I've, yeah, I've learned my lesson um, and I don't want to go back there again. <laughs> I don't. And I'm just hoping that everybody else um, who suffered any kind of hardship has learned from their mistakes as well. And uh, you are getting the things that you need so you don't have to be out there during rough weather and rough times and cold and wind and slippery conditions um, so please, you know, do whatever you can now, if you're not already in the thick of it, because we're not in the thick of it yet. And this is our opportunity to get the things that we need. So that's the end of my, of my, uh, <laughs> nightmare stories of things I've learned. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Also when our air conditioning went out and it was like a hundred plus outside. Oh Yeah. And they didn't fix it for close to what, what was a month. They couldn't get somebody out here to fix it for a month because they had to refix a whole bunch of stuff for it. <sighs> we had to buy a window unit. And then I bought fans to try to push the air through the house because it was so stifling and hot. It was so awful. I learned my lesson with that. Now, those fans that I had bought from Walmart, not ordered from Walmart, they used to be $25 and they went up to 55 The same fans that I would always get and replenish went up to that amount of money now. And they actually cost even a little bit more now. So uh, anything that you might regularly use for any kind of situation, because I keep fans in the house now. And, um, I turn them on when it gets really hot just to help the air move and keep the house in a cooler, you know, more comfortable state. I've learned my lesson. And <laughs> if you find some really nice fans at a thrift store and you need a fan, buy it. Okay. Cause they are, they are very expensive. They are very expensive. Okay. So I'm going to let y'all go. I know it's like, I'm regressing back to lesson learned times and I need a yeah, I'm just tired. I need to, I need to crawl into bed and get some rest. I'm going to talk to you guys later though. Okay. So I hope everybody is hooked up. You got everything that you need and everybody's going to be okay. I hope you're nice, warm and toasty. Remember to layer, layer, layer. And if things get bad, remember to cover up your floors. If you have to go into one room, you know, close up all the vents, close the doors to other rooms, um, just to try to, you know, Keep the heat, as much heat as possible in whatever area you're going to be in, okay? And if you have a tent, you can always do the tent, put blankets over the tent, blanket all over the floor, and then crawl in there to try to get as much heat going as possible. People also have done that with dining room tables where they go underneath the dining room table and put blankets over it to create almost like a tent-like situation to try to get 
the their kids and their families huddled up underneath of there to try to stay as warm as possible. You could just create your own tent in tent like situation. Um, there's lots of things that you can do, but layering, 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 and keep moving. Just move, move. Don't sit still if you can help it. Do something. Keep yourself moving. That'll help keep your body heat going as well. And cover up your heads and your hands if you can, and layer with your socks. So I'll talk to y'all later.